there are classical musicians where, where of course, you see them, you see them uh, concentrated, but not, not, uh, it's not necessary to see them uh, under stress, no, or, or, or tense. Well, I see some violinists or, or, or guitarists or, or pianists that when you see that they are struggling with the passage, maybe they are doing something wrong. Mm -hmm. No, but you can have a very difficult passage, but give the impression that it's easy as well. But why is it so difficult for us to improvise, at least for most of us, improvisation? This is something that I ask my, to myself. I, this is something that I would have loved to, to learn a little bit more. This is the basic of, of the flamenco and from, of the popular music is one of the basic things are, is the improvisation. But on classical music, it's not. Because in classical music, you have the, the score. And normally, we do what it's written in, uh, in the score. And you have to give, of course, your, your personal taste. And you have to, uh, to make your interpretation. But um, on that score, on that music, so you cannot really improvise much on it. Also, there are some, some musicians where we take some classical uh, pieces mm -hmm. and they change some things. And many people criticize this as well. Oh, you are not doing it when the composer is written, mm -hmm. right? They, they, they say as well. And why? I mean, composers sometimes they are open also mm -hmm. to, if you want to make some little change mm -hmm. because it sounds also in the harmony that he's looking for. Uh, why not? Mm -hmm. But uh, maybe probably we are uh, more thinking that, okay, we have to do what is on the score written. Mm -hmm. Probably because of this. Um, some people say that uh, you have to be Brazilian to play Brazilian music, you have to be Spanish to play Spanish music, you have to be born in England to play Dowland. Uh, David Russell once told me, well, that's not true, or I would only be good playing Scottish music, which is obviously <laughs> not good. He's good in playing everything. Yeah, exactly. So um, how do you go about that? Well, I think it's uh, when, depends which kind of music I'm playing, I, I try to enter in the, in, in, in the, in el ambiente, como se dice? Yeah. The ambient. In the world of that composer. Of, of that composer, or that style. Uh -huh. Let's say, so, of course, uh, I will not play Bach as, as a Spanish music, so I, 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 uh, I can't imagine to do something, something like that. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, I, I think it's, it's important that, uh, to know well all the styles. And, and of course, if you play Spanish music, you will play it as, as a Spanish. Uh, but um, if, if you play some other styles, you, you don't have to mix. So you think it's, uh, it's possible then, as long as we respect the style and we know enough about the music, that a German or a Brazilian or an American, that we can play Spanish music well? Well, I, I think if, if you understand well, really well the, the music, if you understand what you have to do and the, the style of, of, of the Spanish music, mm -hmm. everybody is, is able to, to play it. So you don't but, have to go to Andalusia? Uh, I don't think you need really to, to live there. Of course, it, it would help because you, you, you get the all, influences. The, all, these, all these influences, right? But as far as you can understand what you have to do, is, okay, this passage is with a lot of character. This here you are uh, making an imitation of uh, zapateado or, or unas palmas, no sé, rasgueos where you have to give a lot of character in there. So if, if you understand that you have to do it, and you have the technique to do it as well, I think everybody uh, can do it. Yeah. Well, um, normally I like to play the pieces that I, um, that I that I like, no, I, it's not that I say, okay, I will do this because it has to come into the program or whatever, no, I, I make normally a, a decision of the pieces that I like to play. Um, for example, well, right now I was very much, focu very much focused on, on Latin American music, mm -hmm. so I was trying to, to 
get some of Latin American music from different composers, different styles into the, in the, the Latin American music to make the difference between the Latin American music in it. Mm -hmm. in it. Uh, as we were speaking, no? mm -hmm. depending if you are playing uh, something more uh, more cantabile, more, more flexible, or if you are really playing something much more rhythmical. So it depends on the, the styles, but um, I wanted to make a, a program which shows a little bit the different rhythms and the different uh, folklorical elements from the countries. And um, this, is, uh, this is what I was uh, thinking now on, on this program that I was playing. So uh, in your next recording, you're going to record a lot of Latin American music. Something interesting is you're going to play a piece by Villa Lobos called Amare in Sheo. What is this arrangement about? Can you tell us? Well, actually, um, this arrangement, the first arrangement, did it um, Steve Connor, my luthier. And it's a nice story uh, with this piece because when I ordered a guitar to, to Steve Connor, uh, we had a very nice connection because uh, he was asking me many things about, about me, you know, about uh, which things you like, uh, where do you live, and so. He wanted to know about me, which kind of music I like to listen, which kind of music I like to play. And I was saying to him that I like very much Villalobos music. And so he was very much inspired in all the things that we were speaking about in order to put all this energy on the guitar building. Um, he, he's, he, he likes to... to to make the construction of the guitar, to build the, the guitars with this feeling of the, this energy, you know? And he, he's, he's based a lot on, on the nature mm -hmm. in order to, to make the construction of, of the guitar. And so I told him about um, Villalobos, that I like Villalobos very much. And so he was listening this piece, but on piano, because it's, it's originally for piano. And he liked it very much, and he said, I was making the, the arrangement, and he sent it to me. And so I, I was making like a second arrangement of, of his arrangement, so I was changing some, some things. And uh, this is the story why I like to, to introduce this piece in, in, in my program, because it was a very nice connection with uh, Villalobos music while my guitar was, uh, he was building my guitar. Uh, it's interesting that uh, your recording will include pieces by traditional, uh, pieces by Villa Lobos, Manuel Ponce, Lauro, but also you will include things like, uh, you know, pieces by Ginga, uh, yeah. this new transcription uh, from a Villa Lobos piece. Then you have uh, uh, Ariel Ramirez. And um, most interestingly, you have uh, a piece by Cacho Tirao. Can you tell us about that piece as well? Well, it was really fun, fun to, uh, to learn this piece. Um, you were playing that piece in two days, something like that. Well, not what in happened? two. <laughs> <laughs> not in two, not in two. <laughs> how did you feel about it when you got it, how you played it, uh, why it came naturally to you? Milonga, it's not a Spanish rhythm. No, no, no. It, it, it's true that at the beginning, the piece, it was, uh, I was finding the piece a little bit tricky mm -hmm. at the beginning. With the the Cacho was a mm. true virtuoso, you know, he could play anything at any speed. So yeah. he didn't need really think about making things comfortable. <laughs> yeah, yeah it, was, it was tricky to find some, I, I think I was finding some good uh, solutions. solutions with the fingerings in order to. Mm -hmm to make work some, some passages which are really, really tricky. But um, at the moment, I, I took the rhythm, mm -hmm. then it was easier. But I, I, I should say that um, it, it was taking a little bit of, of time for, for it, but uh, very funny. Actually, I have a lot of fun playing this piece. Tell us something. You also teach uh, students. You also teach master classes when you travel. How do you think about teaching? How do you approach teaching on a new student on a master class? How do you do it? 
Well, actually, I have to say that normally I, I don't teach in a fixed position, so I don't have a student which I see regularly. Um, so I only um, make uh, master classes, which I think is very different to uh, make a master class, which normally they are 40 minutes or 50 minutes, and you have to reduce all the information in that time that when you have time for a student and you see a development. Uh, only in master classes, and of course, depending uh, wh what I see on the student, I like to speak about about. I try to speak about everything. Uh, depending the student, if I see that is a little bit weaker on the technique, I try to speak a little bit more on it in order to help him, not only on this piece, uh, but in in general, to apply certain things that it can help in his way of playing. And I like to speak a little bit more on um, try that that music that that guitarist find a way to express what they want to say. Of course, um, sometimes if you don't have a good technique, you cannot express, right? But many people that they have good technique. They also can express because they don't have this 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 uh, uh, na natural talent, let's say, mm -hmm. you know, and they need to work a little bit more on it. Um, but that's why, depending the, the the student, I try that they express what they want to say mm -hmm. and not only see technically mm -hmm. uh, things. That's what I try to 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 bring out from them. Let's say. to the poets. Do you think that we we lost that poetry in the guitar today where everybody plays very loud, very fast? Do you think that it is is it fair to say? <laughs> well, um, it, it's los true. Poetas? Sí, los poetas. It's true that uh, the, the, the is changing. It's, it's true that it's changing. I I see in, in now in in the generation from 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 today I see very much two groups of musicians or guitarists. No? One guitarist that they are very, very much uh, focused on have a very perfect technique, everything very clean and fast, but they forget to make uh, uh, poesia, no? mm -hmm. to, to, to make... Uh, mm -hmm. Poesia. Music, mm -hmm. music, and there is another group that they don't care much about the, the technique, but they do too much, mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and they forget sometimes uh, which is the real tempo or, or what we were speaking before about, for example, uh, uh, Brazilian music that sometimes uh, many musicians take too much, too much time, uh, too much. Uh, Liberty. Uh, liberty. There must be a balance between the two things. Yes, and and I think that, uh, uh, in the generation of today we have a little bit too much these two kind of groups, and um, um, what I think it's important is to mix a little bit. That to, of course we need a good technique in order to make a nice interpretation and to have poetry, and 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 the opposite the same, right? 